you're, you're trying to get in and say, look, here is a, a resource actually we have in the country. We can help these people and we can help the country. Tell us more. I mean, absolutely. I mean, isn't it totally demoralising to be, to be not in work when you know that you can make a contribution? And what I'm proposing today are new measures, new reforms, new thinking to support people who say they want to return to work. Now, in this country, we've got a million people uh, looking for work who want a job. And we've got hundreds of thousands of people who are currently designated as long term sick, but say they would want to work if given the right support. And of course, we've got a million vacancies in the economy as well. So I'm proposing measures like giving more employment support at a local level and looking at some of the ways in which the benefit system works, which for some people who are on sickness-related benefits, it actually acts as a disincentive now to move into work because it's too much of a risk. And I think there are proposals, there are changes that we can introduce which will help more people go to work. Now, of course, I just want to say there will be some of the viewers who, who can't work. And for people who, who can't work, then of course we should guarantee security and inclusion. But for people who want to work, we should reform the system to give them the help that they deserve. Long term sick. I mean, it's really interesting to see that coming out of the pandemic, the UK is the only country in the G7 to see a substantial rise in economic activity, the so called great resignation with people just deciding they don't want to go back into the workplace. But this is a huge problem for whoever ends up running the country over the next decade because a lot of people, the experts say, just haven't calculated how much they're going to need in their pension pot as people live longer and the cost of living rises. People may not actually be making a good economic decision. That, that, that's absolutely right. So we've got increasing numbers of over 50s who have left work. Some of that is for early retirement. Some of it's because of ill health. Some of it's because they're caring for a partner, a partner or, a, or perhaps even a mum or dad who maybe has had a stroke or perhaps sadly has developed dementia and they need to care for them. But they say, look, if I could find the right work options, if I could find a flexible work option, I might, I might go back to work. So we should put reforms into the system to help them find flexible work. But people also should get advice as well, because you've got some people who think, you know what, I've, I've got some savings, I can access some pension, I feel, I feel comfortable taking early retirement. That might be the right choice when you're in your 50s. But if you're going to live another 30 or 40 years, you need to make sure you've taken advice, that you've, that you've done the calculations, that you've got the income for the next 30 or 40 years. So we need to make sure people have got access to proper advice as well. It's not just about people and the conditions they have. It's about the attitude and the flexibility of employers as well, Jonathan. I mean, how do you get them to, say, taking on someone who is long-term, have a long-term condition, um, is a good idea? I mean, that's, 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 that's really important. I mean, I was at a, uh, a charity in, in, uh, in Grays in Thurrock yesterday who help disabled people uh, move into the workplace. And they work with employers as well to uh, promote the benefits of having a disabled person or somebody with long-term health conditions in, uh, working in the, uh, in the workplace. So we've got to work with employers as well uh, to promote the benefits of having a more diverse workforce, whether that is older workers. I mean, w one of the things in w which we've got to do is champion older workers. So, uh, often you get studies which show that employers can... Um, sometimes show a bias against older workers. You know, you see, you get these examples where if you send in CVs for an interview and you put the date of birth on, the older workers sometimes don't get an interview. But if you don't put the date of birth on, the same person with the same CV does get the interview. So you've got to encourage employers to celebrate the, value, the, the, the skills and abilities and talents of older workers as well.